What is up YouTube? It's that time again a new PvP season has begun. And this time the reward hero is Bishop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other rewards. And then we'll check this new character out in detail. So first, like always, you get 10 gold for gold lead. For diamond you get the emerald prism. It has a buff that says, while active, beneficial effects are not removed by enemy attacks or harmful status effects. It also says gain stacking damage increase when attacking while active. And secondly, gain stacking defensive increase when hit while active. So that's a pretty interesting item. If it was quick action, it would be amazing. Next we have the blueprint for the tactician's Aegis armor. This armor has psychological warfare. Single target attacks have a 50% chance to apply psychic lock and apply exhausted. So I like this armor and I think it's going to be pretty promising. I look forward to using it. Now onto the Adamantium Award character, Bishop. He is a bruiser which is really interesting to me. And he has two passives. Energy manipulation, so he takes half damage and gains an extra turn from kinetic, energy, psychic, and elemental attacks. And he has a chance to protect and gains potential energy when he's hit by these types of attacks. Lastly, he has Run and Gun, access to future weaponry, and then it says returns to normal actions. So let's take a look at his abilities and see what they say. His level 1 is Headhunter. It hits one enemy. It is a ranged gun energy tech. It has Boon Buster. Deals increased damage against targets with strengthened, fortified, focused, agile, shield, or regen effects. And it causes Lock On so taking additional damage from ranged attacks. So I'm assuming that most of his attacks are going to be energy or tech attacks. His level 2 is called Cyberkinetic Crash. It's a melee unarmed tech. It gives potential energy and then it causes obsolete technology, prevents technology attacks, removes beneficial technology status effects, slows metal targets, and it also causes short circuit chance to cause stun to mechanical targets. So far there's a lot of different buffs and debuffs that his abilities give. Next we have a quick action ability. It's subtle, it has locked potential so you unlock it with potential energy, and then it causes focus energy. Focus the stored energy from previous attacks and unlocks focus actions. Lastly his level 9 is dead or alive. It hits all enemies, it has tech upgrade, so technology attacks do extra damage, and it causes a weak point to all enemies. So far he's looking really interesting, but I'm not quite sure how he's going to work. I may be overthinking things, but I do like to see the character in action before I pass judgment. But anyways, on to his second set of abilities, which I assume are unlocked by potential energy. First is a concussive blast. It consumes all potential energy. It looks like it does pretty good damage. Second is a buff and has full potential, gain realized potential for each stack of potential energy, increases all stats and stacks up to three times. Third, he has channeled energy. So that's unleashed potential, consumes all potential energy to hit all enemies. Lastly, he has a buff heal on himself. So it consumes potential energy, restores health when applied, removes harmful status effects, and restores health over time for X rounds, where X is the number of potential energy on the target. So he's definitely an interesting character, and I'm surprised that he's a bruiser. But next, we're going to briefly talk about how they added the attacking team and defending team. So here you can see you can have different armors on your agent, you can have different weapon sets, and you can even have the same character or different characters in whatever class you want. So for instance, you could have an Infiltrator Phoenix on defense and a Tactician Phoenix on offense. Or you can just use completely different characters on both teams altogether. The other amazing thing I notice is that the class that you have selected on your team page doesn't change. So here you see I'm getting the full blaster bonus from characters like Phoenix, even though I have Phoenix slotted in as an Infiltrator in my team. And I'll show you in one second that the same thing goes for Iron Patriot. So I have Iron Patriot as a blaster on my regular team page. And I'm getting the attack bonus for that. 
even though I have him as a tactician on my attacking team. And last but not least, you can have a completely different weapon setup and armor for your PvE experience. So this is incredible, it allows you to test out teams on offense without worrying about losing on defense. You also can try different things in the computer missions, and it doesn't affect your PvP teams. All in all, these are pretty sweet updates, and I think we're all going to enjoy them. After this video, I'm going to have one more where I take a look at Electra, the comic collection, and the lockbox task list. That's going to be the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos.